Hi everyone, welcome to Shruti's Pharma World. Today I am going to talk about convection. Convection is a heat transfer mechanism. When heat flow is achieved by the actual mixing of warmer portions with the cooler portions of the same material, then the process is known as convection. Heating of water by coil type water heater is an example for this mechanism. Convection is restricted to the flow of heat in fluids. In fluid, heat transfer occurs on account of actual mixing of its layers. Convection are of two types, forced convection and natural convection. Forced convection, mixing of fluid may be obtained by the use of a stirrer or agitator or pumping the fluid for recirculation. Such a process in heat transfer is designated as forced convection. In some types of tube evaporators, the evaporating liquid is forced through the tubes under pressure. In such cases, heat transfer occurs by forced convection mechanism. Natural convection, when a body of fluid is heated, mixing of fluid is obtained by the current setup, then the process is known as natural convection. In a pan evaporator, Convection current are set up in the evaporating liquid. Because of this convection current, warmer portions mixed with cooler portions of the same material. Okay, this process is known as natural convection. Now let's see the heat transfer through a pipeline. The flow of liquid through a pipeline can be either viscous or turbulent in nature. In the case of viscous flow, the velocity of fluid is zero at the actual surface of the wall. The layer of fluid that is adjacent to the wall that act as stagnant film. This is in case of viscous flow. In the case of turbulent flow, stagnant film exists there. At the center of the fluid, uh, the flow of fluid will be turbulent in nature. The viscous flow is also observed at the surface of the fluid. The viscous flow is also exists the viscous flow is observed at the surface of the fluid. A film of buffer layer exists between these two types of flow. Sometimes scales may be deposited on the surface of the metal wall. In such cases, heat must be conducted through the scales. When steam gives Latin heat, water will contains on the surface of the vessel. Again, heat must be conducted through this water film. For heat transfer in a tube, heat must pass through the stagnant film by conduction. The conductivity of stagnant film is very less. Now let's talk about the heat transfer in forced convection. Forced convection means mixing of fluid may be obtained by the use of a stirrer or agitator or pumping the fluid for recirculation. Such a process in heat transfer is designated as forced convection. Convection is a mixing of warmer portions with cooler portions of the same material. Uh, and here, a uh, stirrer or agitator is used to mix the warmer portions with cooler portions of the same material. Then the process is known as forced convection. Heat transfer in forced convection depends on many variables. That depends on overall heat transfer coefficient, temperature drop, and area of the heating surface. The rate of heat transfer we can determine using this equation. Rate of heat transfer is equal to overall heat transfer coefficient into area of the heating surface into temperature drop. By using this equation, we can calculate the rate of heat transfer in forced convection. To understand more about the heat transfer in forced convection, I will explain an experiment for you. Uh, this is a metal wall. Uh, it is a conducting metal wall. A conducting metal wall is placed between hot fluid and cold fluid. Now let's see the uh, characteristics of this metal wall. The dotted line HH that represent the boundary of the film in viscous flow on the hot side. The dotted line CC that represent the boundary of the film in viscous flow on the cold fluid side. The temperature gradient through the line TC, TD that is caused by the flow of heat by conduction through the metal wall. And the metal wall is having thickness L meter. Now let's see the important characteristics of hot fluid side. This is hot fluid side. To the right of uh, dotted line HH that represent 
the fluid is in turbulent flow on the hot side ta is the maximum temperature in the hot fluid side tb is the temperature at the viscous turbulent junction tb is the temperature at the boundary on the hot fluid side tc is the temperature at the actual surface of the metal wall the curve ta tb tc that represent the temperature gradient from the hot fluid to the metal wall the curve ta tb tc that represent the temperature gradient from the bulk of the hot fluid to the metal wall and this is caused by the flow of heat in forced convection t1 is the average temperature on the hot fluid side and it is represented by the letter m m this average temperature is obtained after mixing and uh, this average temperature is very important to calculate the heat transfer so t1 is the average temperature on the hot fluid side uh, now move on to the cold fluid side uh, the left of the dotted line cc that represent the fluids in turbulent flow on the cold side tf is the minimum temperature on the cold fluid side uh, te is the temperature at the viscous turbulent flow junction td represent the temperature at the actual surface on the cold fluid side td represent the temperature at the actual interface on the cold fluid side the curve td te tf that represent the temperature gradient from the metal wall to the bulk of the cold fluid this is caused by the flow of heat in forced convection and t2 is the average temperature on the cold fluid side and it is represented by the letter n n this average temperature is also very important to calculate the heat transfer in forced convection the rate of heat transfer is calculated using this equation u1 delta t a1 rate of heat transfer is equal to u1 delta t a1 u1 is the heat transfer coefficient delta t is the temperature drop a1 is the area of the heating surface so by using this equation we can calculate the heat transfer in forced convection